Hello. I would like to demonstrate a project that I have coming up. My wife wanted a wall hanging. Uh, we've seen some online reclaimed wood wall hangings. Not a lot of detail on how to do them, so I thought I'd just show what I've done. So here's the pattern here. Again, for this project, you can choose, obviously, whichever design you want. This just happened to be one that uh, my wife liked and had requested that I make. You can see that it's a number of different colored woods and also which are just stained differently, but also a, different, a number of different types of wood and a number of different textures. First of all, I was very fortunate to pick up some wood from a local workshop, just some cutouts. I'll show you that now. So these cutoffs are mahogany, maple, birch, fir, oak, and I have some pine. So now, now one thing about this project, it's going to be, uh, in the end, it's going to be texturized. The wood is going to be uh, different textures with different techniques, which I'll show later. But for that reason, some of the boards I got were already rough. I'm just going to leave those uh, rough side out. And uh, when I cut them, I'll just keep the smooth side down and, and keep the rough side out just for some interest. Now, the other thing that I was able to do, and some of the wood was square stock to start with, so I was able to turn it over and cut some of them, especially the oak quarter sawn, and the quarter sawn side will be out just again for a bit different texture. So I'm back. You can see here I have my table saw set up and I'm just going to rip them. I've got one of the thinner boards in there now. I'm going to just rip the thicker stock to that thickness. Well, this is probably where I call it a night, but all my wood is now cut into two widths, one and a quarter, and I ended up going about uh, 0.4 inches on the narrow strips you can see up at the top. Uh, so for this project, you're going to need a backer board. I, uh, I, cut, I took an MDF sheet, quarter inch, uh, four, four by four, and I cut that into three sections. I'll show you that here. So I cut that into four, sorry, into three sections, 16 inches, 16 inches wide each. That just happened to be what matched my project the best. But again, it'll depend on what uh, your project is required. Uh, for me, that works out. Uh, it gives me the three panels that I'm looking for. And you want the backer board so that you've got some some way to uh, glue your your strips on and hold them in place. Eight, but I'm just going to find the middle of this board, start laying out my pattern, and then basically uh, cut it off where it most likely fits after I've laid the pattern in. So I'll get started on that now. The other thing that I've done, because all my pieces are at 45 to one another, I cut myself a template that's at that creates a 45, a 90. I have a T-square, but this is just a little bit bigger. So I cut that on my compound miter saw, and I'll use that as I lay the pieces out just to make sure that everything is remaining straight and true. So I'm going to go ahead and start gluing up, and uh, I'll show you as I go. So you can see now how it's starting to build up. It's going to be a slow process. Uh, I've got the first two rows of cedar down, starting to work on the pine. Pine are not glued down yet because I'm going to treat the pine and uh, I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do that next. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is give it that weathered look on the pine and I'm going to do that with a wire brush. So here I am, I'm ready to begin uh, weathering the pine. It's going to be a couple step treatment. Number one, I'm going to wire brush it. Then I'm going to uh, treat it with a solution that I made with steel wool and vinegar and with some strong tea just to give it a, a good color. I'm just going to start with a regular wire brush. Uh, I believe it's uh, uh, just an iron brush you can buy at any, any hardware store. And then I just want to brush it. And go with the and you can see the sawdust. I'm happy with that uh, for that strip. So that's just going to uh, go in there. And from this side. And then I'll continue uh, as I move on. 
So we've reached a milestone here, somewhat. I'm starting to get some, as you can see, some, some of the cedar down here that's rough. Uh, the, sorry about this. The pine that's been wire brushed. And now we're putting in our first piece of mahogany. Now the mahogany is, is finished, but mahogany is a relatively soft wood. So I'm going to show you another technique that I'm going to use just to create a little bit of texture on the wood. So the pine was wire brushed to give that weathered look. Now we're going to do something different with the mahogany. Um, we're going to do that over in the bandsaw, and it's a procedure called skipping it on the blade, blade skipping, and uh, it just gives it a little bit of extra texture, so I'll show you that now. Hopefully you can see this okay. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this back and forth on the blade, and it's just going to make some scratch marks on the side of the wood, and make it basically look like it was rough sawn. How well this shows, hopefully you can see it. Uh, it just puts a few marks on it, and you can do as much or as little as you want. Again, it just gives it a little bit of texture so that it looks like it's been, uh, it's an older piece of wood. I'll turn. Good morning. Well, hopefully there'll be an improvement in uh, some of the video that I've been shooting. Uh, I was fortunate my daughter gave me a her selfie stick, so I'll, I'll be using that from here on out, as opposed to my old selfie stick, which obviously uh, did the trick, but it was a little short. So uh, this morning we've got a couple projects on the go, uh, kind of side projects. I'll just show you what's done so far and discuss a little problem that I have, and then we'll discuss on a small project to uh, solve it. I'm going to show you some more techniques for just uh, giving some character to the wood. Uh, this is uh, aging the wood. This can be done quite simply. I have two solutions here. The first one, this clear one, is steel wool, which I tore up into pieces, and then soaked it in vinegar for a week. And then once that soaked for a week, I just removed the steel wool poured it over into another container and that vinegar and steel wool solution we'll use that in a minute we'll brush it on and it'll age the wood the second solution is just a very very strong cup of tea I ended up putting 10 cups or sorry 10 tea bags in a, in a small pot of tea and made it very very strong Ste steeped it for a while just to make a really strong batch you can see here some pine wood which I've uh, treated so this gray here is just the steel wool and the tea. And then I tried some different stains over, uh, actually just some acrylic paints watered down as really gray. So I'm gonna try and weather the cedar and see how that looks. This here piece was pine. And you can see how gray it went. Again, that is just the uh, steel wool and tea solution. Uh, so I'm gonna try that on cedar. I suspect it'll be quite different. So I'm gonna start with the tea. I'm just gonna brush that on. And so you can see the two uh, samples. You can see how much they've grayed up uh, compared to the original here. This one is the one that had the T first. And uh, actually, I believe that's only had the T. And this is uh, just the solution from the steel wool and the uh, vinegar. I'm going to go ahead and put another coat on this, and I'm going to put a coat on this. Let that dry for a little bit, and then come back and take another look. But it's starting to look like the color I'm going to want for my cedar. Now I realize I've been talking a lot about the steel wool and vinegar solution. Uh, just to give you a little more detail on how that was done. Uh, I took steel wool. The finer you can get, the better. I had zero, 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 zero would have worked as well, maybe even possibly a little bit better. So all I do, uh, and I should note, do not use any SOS pads or anything that might contain soap. Make sure you get just the steel wool. I tear this up into small pieces, just pull it off by hand, put it into the uh, mason jar. A glass jar I think works best, that way you don't get any Inter interactions. Fill the bottle full of vinegar and then just put the cap on and let it sit for a week. 
at the end of the week, just remove the steel wall. I just poured it over from one jar to another. Again, a glass jar is preferable. And uh, you're good to go. That's, that's all there is to it. And you end up with, uh, I think, a very nice uh, weathered look at the, at the end of it. The uh, second panel, which is a mirror image of the first panel, which I've shown you already that I've started. And uh, it's been a couple hours since I've shown it last, but you can see that, again, that the, the uh, cedar that I've aged is, uh, is uh, starting to gray up fairly nicely. And I'll go ahead and repeat that same pattern on my second panel and then uh, advance from there. Let me go ahead and show you the uh, results of today. Uh, they've fully dried now, so that's the cedar after it's been treated. It's grayed gray rather nicely. I know in the photo it may look a little green, one of the slices, but uh, it's actually fairly gray. Again, I'll just show you for reference cedar, the rough cedar that we started with, and this is the brushed on solution of uh, vinegar and and uh, steel wool. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to work out fine. Okay, I'm done one panel, which you can see here, and I've got to start on the second panel. The second panel has a square in the middle, diamond shape, I guess. Now I need to Coordinate the lines coming from this panel coming into the square so that it looks like the lines continue. So in order to do that, I have to decide how far apart they're going to be when they're on the wall. In my case, I went with two and a half inches. So then it's just a matter of laying this board, which is the same blue color, to continue it into the other panel by laying it out onto the existing stripe and then make a mark on where it's going to be coming into the other board so I'll know where to go with that and then I just check the other strip coming down just to make sure it's a equal spacing and then once I get those two on everything will build out from there in either direction but and they'll match but I just need to get one uh, reference strip on on each end and then go from there